God, turn with me tonight to the book of Judges. The book of Judges. And you find, we'll find these recorded words in verse chapter 7 of the book of Judges. I'd like for you to follow along with me beginning at verse 16. That is verse 16 of chapter 7 of the book of Judges. And we have one New Testament scripture that we will share with you coming from the book of Hebrews. However, the book of Judges will begin here in chapter 16, excuse me, chapter 7, verse 16. And he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, note this, look on me and do likewise, and behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. And verse 18, let's read together. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Let the church say amen. amen. Turn to the book of Hebrews. And our New Testament scripture is one verse, chapter 12, and verse number 2. Chapter 12 of the book of Hebrews, and verse number 2. When you have it, say amen. Let us read together. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him... Endure the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let the church say amen. amen. I trust that you see a connection here in regards to when Gideon, he admonished the people to look on me and do as I do. And God admonished the church Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And tonight's message is focused faith will follow Jesus. Focused faith will follow Jesus. Jesus said, I am the author or the originator of faith in one's life because God he is invisible and faith is walking by what we can't see but the Bible says that Jesus who is God he made it possible that you and I can enter into a right relationship with God that we might put our trust and our confidence in the one whom we can't see. In other words, God is admonishing us, I don't want you to lean on your own abilities your own understanding, your own resources. Because it took faith for us to enter into a right relationship with God. The Lord let us know without faith it is impossible. Not only to know God, but to please God. And the Lord said we must, amen, when we come to him we must, Believe, believe that he is, that he is able to heal. He is able to deliver. He is able to set free. Whatever you need from God, you must trust in him. 
and he is able. But yet, it must go beyond, faith must go beyond just believing. Because in order to receive our reward from God or for God to manifest our faith, he said he is rewarded to them that what? Diligently seek him. And so we must first have a desire to please him and put forth an effort to seek him. That our faith might be made manifest. In our lives, Jesus said, not only am I the author or the originator of your faith, but I'm the finisher in which I am the perfecter. I, I must perfect faith in you, which means that we must grow in faith. Our faith does not increase on its own. And as children of God, our faith will be tested. Testing, tested faith is when we fall into circumstances that are beyond our control. Or that we face opposition that comes against us. And instead of depending on on our resources, depending on our ability. It's time to exercise our faith and trust God. God, he allows us and he admonishes us to do the possible and then he will step in and do the impossible. What is the possible? Obey my word. Keep serving me. Keep trusting me. Keep praising me. Yes, there may be a whole lot of things that are out of our control, but yet there's a whole lot of things that we can do. And Jesus does not want fear to overtake us. Fear is a emotion. It's a natural emotion when we face situations that are beyond our control. But note, I said, we must not allow fear to overtake us. Because when fear overtakes us, faith and fear cannot abide in the same heart. When we become fearful, then we panic. And we lean on everything else but God. We seek everything else but God. We put our confidence and trust in everything else but God. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But there's a power. And we have to stir up the power of the Holy Ghost when we fall into circumstances. Oh, my God. That we can't do anything about, but my know a God that's able. Hallelujah. He's an omnipotent God. There's nothing too hard for him. But the Lord desires that we Focus. Focus means to concentrate, to draw our full attention to. And in order to focus on God when troubles come, that means that we have to take our eyes off of everything else. And you cannot trust and have confidence in the things you can see and in the things you can't see at the same time. You can only focus on one thing. But how many times when situations come, we automatically, we turn to the medicine, we turn to the doctor, we turn to the physician, we turn to the bank account. But Lord, I'm learning to turn to Jesus before I do anything else. Because he is my source of strength. He is my portion. <laughs> Everything I need is in Jesus. He's my encourager. Oh Lord, God has a way of encouraging our faith to let us know that I am able to make everything all right. Our faith not only must be exercised, but we need encouragement. We find encouragement by the word 
of God. God has a way of speaking to us. Oh, Lord, in that still, small voice, he knows what you're going through. He knows what you face. Lord, the load gets heavy. Oh, but my God, my God. Hallelujah. He's my comforter. He's my counselor. And we must learn to look and focus our faith on Jesus that we might follow his holy word. Jesus Christ, as he admonished us by his word, he let us know that he set an example. He endured the cross. And there's going to come a time as Jesus admonished all those that will follow him. He said you have to first deny yourself. Take up your own cross and then follow me. And so I want you to see the three F's that are working in this message. Focused faith will follow Jesus even during the difficult times. Oh Lord, even during the challenging times. It's not a time for us to disappear, but it's a time for us to show up and let God be praised in our lives. God is trying to encourage us to break that old pattern, that old habits that he might manifest something new in our lives. For that, what we've been doing up to this point has only got us so far where God is trying to take you and increase you in a greater way that he, you can get to know him even better than you know him right now. God, he had a work for Gideon to do. His people were in bondage. His people were delivered over into the hands of the Midianites, and they cried out unto God. I'm glad that God hears your cry. And in his own time, he will send exactly what we need. We sing a song, I've been delivered. Praise ye the Lord. We have to praise God, amen, before our deliverance, for our deliverance. <laughs> oh, Lord God, while I'm yet waiting on God, while I'm yet focused, while I'm yet following, Lord, I will praise you. I will bless your name at all times. Don't let the devil steal your praise, because when fear grip your heart, oh, it's difficult to praise God. Difficult to do, do anything for God. But yet the Lord is letting us know, I don't want you to fear what man shall do unto thee. I'm your helper. I'm your strength. We need encouragement. And before our faith can increase, first it has to be tested. It has to be encouraged. And then it has to be exercised. And so here, Gideon's faith was being tested. And in chapter 7, Gideon had a whole army, 32,000 at his disposal, as they faced not only the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the children of the east. It seemed as if their enemy uh, it was, had outnumbered them and Gideon, God prepared him because he himself had fear and doubted what God can do. But God let him know, I'm going to be with you. And see, we need encouragement as we face our troubles, our situations. And God said, I'm already with you. You have to stir up the gift of the Holy Ghost that you can counteract the spirit of fear that has gripped your heart. Yes, the power of God that's greater, amen, than any spirit that will try to keep you from accomplishing the will of God. And the devil, that's what he does. He wants to bully you and make you afraid, fearful for your life. But I'm glad that as God 
encourage Gideon. We need encouragement. We need to spend time with God that he might encourage our souls and let us know that he has not left us or or forsaken us. The presence of God is real. Not just around you, but it has to be on fire on the inside. Troubles have a way of, of putting our fire out, dampening our light. We need to get around those that, oh, fire is still burning. Ooh, my God, my God. You don't need to be around those that are going to pull you down in a spiritual way. But you need to be around those that can lift you up and encourage you. Oh, Lord, God, serve the same God you serve. Look to the same Jesus you need to be looking to. Everybody don't have a mind to look to Jesus. People will counsel you and tell you all these other things which you should be doing, but I need to say I need to go talk to Jesus. I need to spend some time with God. Let me get to the house of God and I might get a breakthrough. (laughs) The Lord, he encouraged Gideon and by the time it was time to face the enemy, Gideon, He was a follower of God. And here in chapter 7, verse 2, the Lord said unto Gideon, he had 32,000, but the Lord said, you have too many. You have too many. Amen. For me to give the Midianites into their hands. In other words, God said, "I, I cannot operate under these conditions. So for my glory to be manifested, the things that you see it has to decrease. Well, you might say, as a leader of an army, I need more troops. <laughs> I, I need to increase. I need as many bodies as I can get. Well, God don't work like man. <laughs> God need you to decrease that he might increase. You might humble yourself, God, that he might be the one that increase in you in a spiritual way. I need to build myself up in a spiritual way. Hallelujah. Because my troubles oh, are weighing me down. But Lord, I need you to lift me up. And here, God said, lest Israel vaunt themselves or boast in themselves against God saying what? My own hand hath saved me. See, our, by our own hand, by our own resources, by our own education, we can accomplish things. But yet, that's not giving glory to God. God, when he does something, hallelujah, you can't explain how it got done. But all you know is God did it. That's for me. If you have the big buildings, have the big resources, it's no big thing for you to accomplish the things by your own hand and resources. But yet, and it's easy for one to place their faith in the things that they can see. But God, he needs a handful Oh, Lord God. And people walk by and say, how in the world are they accomplishing what they're accomplishing? Nothing but God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not doing what everyone else is doing. But yet our faith is focused on Jesus following his word. Too many can get too big for their own selves. And pride has a way of causing them to forget where God brought them from. And so faith has to be perfected in continually trusting God, continually depending on God. And so he continually tests us until we pass the test. If we don't pass the test, that same test is going to keep on coming our way. This is why it's a pattern. Some folk have a pattern. When troubles come, they disappear. Troubles come, they disappear. Troubles come, they disappear. You got to break that pattern. If you continue to do the same thing, the same pattern. 
is going to take place. God wants to manifest himself in a new way, but it's going to take new faith. It's going to take a new dependency and trust in God. Well, God says, send all those home that are fearful. Right? See, faith and fear cannot work together. And that was 22,000 folk. <laughs> oh, send them home. Oh, Lord God, because the Lord, he wants those that believe God is able to do the impossible. And he was testing these men. They did not realize it. See, fear and lack of faith can hinder, hinder those that have faith. But you want to be one that will encourage someone else. And let them know that I don't know what you're going through, but I know God is able. We are yet praying for your situation that God will send a breakthrough. I thank God to be around positive people. But everyone is not positive. Positive for God. And Jesus, he sent those folks home in verse 4. He said, yet you still have too many. Yet Gideon, by faith as a leader of God, prepared by God, he wasn't concerned about folk leaving him. Because this was not, amen, Gideon's work. This was the work of the Lord. See, people, they'll threaten you. Well, I'm going to leave. If I can't do it my way, well, God don't need you. <laughs> oh, but we need him. Amen. Glory to God. And his work will still go on. And his work will still prosper. As a matter of fact, it'll prosper more. Oh, Lord, when those dead branches are cut off, when those dead branches are let go, Time you're going to prune the tree. Not me, but God does. Hallelujah. And I thank him, saints. I want to be that branch that brings forth fruit. Why? Well, because he purge it. They can, it can what? Bring forth more fruit. Many that are going to church may not be growing. And you can show up day in and day out, yet where is your fruit? Because the pattern of your life, amen, is quite obvious. That faith is not a priority. Faith is not your focus. Oh, God, he's had a word for us tonight. And yet the Lord, amen, used Gideon to bring these folk down to the river. And yet the, those that they both responded by drinking water, but in two different ways, in two different ways. And we're not going to over-spiritualize, you know, those that lapped. In verse 6, they lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to do what? Drink water. Now, you might... Say, well, wow, those that bow down, right? And we say, oh, they humble themselves. Those should be the one. But God, his ways are not like our ways. And I want you to really see, amen, how God works. Because those that lapped water, they didn't bow down, but they had their head up. Hallelujah. They had their eyes up, <laughs> looking up to Jesus, looking to God. He's our follower. He's our leader. Glory to God. Sometimes, yes, we have to humble ourselves, but there are times we have to learn to keep our eyes focused so that we're not distracted by anything else. We're talking about focused faith. The devil wants you to focus on everything else. And then, when we've tried everything else, we fall back on Jesus. No, faith is trusting God first. Amen. Seeking God first. Talking to God first. Hallelujah. Let him direct your path. And here, as God 
had stripped down his army. And sometimes God has to strip us down when our faith is not what it should be so that we don't depend on the bank account, so that we don't depend on the health insurance, so that we don't depend on our primary care physician. We don't have those things. You got nothing else but to depend on Jesus. And amen, God's folk may not be rich naturally, but rich in spirit. Rich in faith. And those other things don't become a distraction. Because when you don't have those other things to depend on, Jesus is the one you seek first. <laughs> and God has to condition you and build you up. When you're faithful and pass the test and exercise your faith, God knows that you can handle those other things. Because you will keep them and put them in perspective. God knew that this people would vaunt themselves. And a lot of times he knows us better than we know ourselves. And won't give us certain things because he knows that it's going to be a curse to you and not a blessing. It's going to hinder your walk with God. Amen. And not help it. Glory to God. We ask for many things, but we have to make sure we're asking in the will of God that it might be an enhancement to our spiritual life. God will never give us anything that is detriment to our spiritual well-being. Oh, I thank him for the word. And here, as Gideon led God's people, Gideon needed encouragement. And so God, he sent one, a man, in verse 13, that told a dream unto this fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed the dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and did what? Came unto a tent. And see here, this dream was to encourage Gideon and let him know that God was going to deliver. Amen. This large army, amen, with just a cake. A barley bread. <laughs> oh, see, God, all he needs is something small. All of you, that which will trust in him, that which will lean on him. Now, your answer may not come through a dream, but God speaks today by his word. And we need encouragement by his word. And when Gideon heard this encouragement, he worshiped God. And he was determined to move forward. Because God had already confirmed what he was going to do. But it was up to Gideon to do it God's way and not man's way. Oh, we got to get rid of our ways. Get rid of our understanding. Our understanding is flawed. Our ways are not like God's ways. We have to forsake and get rid of them. If you desire God to take you and elevate you in a higher plane. Well, here, as they got ready, Gideon told these men, I'm going to divide you. And three companies of 100 men. And I'm going to give you three things. A trumpet, a jar, and a torch. A trumpet to blow, a jar or a pitcher to break, and yet a lamp to burn. <laughs> oh, these don't look like weapons of war. Oh, but we know that our weapons are not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Obedience is our weapon. Faith is our weapon. Praise is our weapon. We must know that God will never leave us defenseless. But there are certain things that we must do. And I want you to see and take these things personally. The trumpet was used to make noise. Glory to God. And the Lord desires that we enter into his presence and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, when we're all depressed, 
oh Lord, discouraged. Yet can you make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Not just a noise of complaining. Uh, not just a noise of sorrow. Poor me. But when the Holy Ghost joy is stirred up on the inside. Hallelujah. Amen. My praise is not conditional on how well things are going. As a matter of fact, when troubles increase, my praise will increase. When troubles increase, my joy increase. And I'm glad that I can bless the Lord at all times because it's praise it's a Holy Ghost praise it's not based on the instruments it's not based on if the singers are available but I'm glad that I can make melody in my heart and stir up the joy of the Lord don't put your trumpet down but when you're faced with a difficult situation and you will face opposition glory to God where is your praise unto God and then he said take the lamp the light that shineth in your soul. The light of God is a standard, the standard of holiness. Let your light shine in a darkened world for the works of darkness are made manifest by the flesh. But holiness is the light of God shining through you. Well, you are an example, not of the world, but of the word of God. He's a good God. And he said, take that lamp and cover it up with the pitcher. But yet, when it's time, I want you to break that pitcher. The Lord lets us know that we must be a broken vessel that he might put us back together again a broken and a contrite heart is what gets the attention of God and Lord sometime I gotta break you and bring you all the way down because you are fighting against the will of God the chasing of the Lord but Lord I need you to break me that you might make me over again why Lord do I have to face this why Lord do I have to go through this you're just a clay how dare you say to the potter I know what's best for you you need to be broken down because you have not yielded fully to my word he's a good God and when the camp surrounded the enemy aren't you glad that when fear is moved out the way you can stand boldly in the strength of God and the power of God look the devil in the face and say I will stand because God has given me everything to withstand your tricks devil and when it was time there's an appointed time there's an appointed time there's an appointed time for your breakthrough there's an appointed time for your deliverance keep on waiting for God to speak for his word to come and set you free I'm glad it's nothing like when you get a breakthrough when that load is heavy but you come to the house of God a dragon 
your cross. You're all weighted down. But when you get to the house of God, you say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of God. And the more I said, the more I give God praise. And the more I give God thanks, the load gets lighter and lighter and lighter. I feel brand new. I feel the burden lifted. I feel like going on. I feel like praising God. The more you praise Him, the more I feel like praising, praising God. If you don't want to praise Him, don't you hinder me. Because I'm glad God has given me this chance. I'm a praise Him all by myself. I'm a praise Him while I have the chance. God has given me this chance right now. Tomorrow is not promised. But Jesus, while I'm in the valley, I'm going to praise you. I'm facing my sickness. I will. I will give you praise. I'm going to make a joy, a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because when God pulled down those strongholds, when God loosed, was holding you, I'm free. I'm free. Jesus has set me free. Woo. My God, my Lord, they began to break the pictures. They began to shine the light. They began to blow the trumpet. Glory to God. And there was confusion in the camp. The enemy is confused. He thought these problems would weigh you down. But yet, my child is still praising me. Wait a minute. These problems are supposed to break them. But I know a God. I know a God that's greater than my problems. There's nothing, nothing going to stop me from praising my God. I want to praise God. Praise God. Oh, I, I got a feeling. I got a feeling. I said, I got a feeling. Everything, everything going to be all right. Going to be all right. Going to be all right. Oh, I, I got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, I, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, I, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. If you put your trust in Jesus, everything be all right. If you put your trust in Jesus, everything be all right. If you put your trust in Jesus, everything you don't know what he did for me. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Oh, I, I got everything. Thank you for healing my body. Oh, I. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling. Everything's gonna be alright.